has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. And we're back. Hour number three. Of Pharrell Coast to Coast here on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. Good to have you with us, Carver High and Cam Stewart in for Scotty all week long, right here on the grid. Good to have you along board. Uh, all right, Cam, and you're pulling the double duty. Cam still got a little game time decisions coming up uh, yes. after this, of course, as always, him and Gabe. Uh, so, Cam, uh, I thank you for hanging with me and pulling the double dip uh, this week uh, here on the grid. Let's get into now, Cam, some of this NBA stuff. And honestly, like, it was quiet for a few weeks. Maybe the smoke will, like, start to make it actually happen now. I just want this guy, Kevin Durant, to get traded already. Uh, I I was hoping it would be last week during the All-Star game. So that would have been fun for us for a couple of days while there wasn't much happening. But, like, it's been a month since he requested the trade. Um, He only wants to go to certain places. I give the Nets credit that, look, they want the sun, the moon, and the stars for them. I completely understand that. But let me ask you first, from the Celtics side of things, who just went to the NBA Finals with the team that they have right now, and maybe a couple tweaks, who knows what can happen. Um, Would you give up Jalen Brown and Marcus Smart, which is what the Nets want, and more, to bring Kevin Durant to Boston. Do you like that from the Celtics side of things? Hell no. Are you crazy? No way. <laughs> no, no, this is the thing. I get the Nets want the, the world, but they're not going to give you the world. That's ridiculous. Maybe one guy in a package we could come together, but both, Carver? No way. Like, what are the, like, I'm sorry. Kevin Durant's still getting older. He's a great player, but come on now. You can't mortgage the future for that. I, I don't know what you think about that. I think it's ridiculous. No, you can't have both of those guys. I'm going to say no way. And it's more than just both of those guys. Exactly. It's a bunch of unprotected first-round picks where, look, I, I'm always torn with the pick thing, Cam, because, and look, the only time it's really burned somebody was that was the Brooklyn-Boston KD-Paul Pierce one where the Nets ended up being awful and that ended up being a really bad situation. And, yes, that can happen. But if you are making a deal of this magnitude, you'd like to think – that in the next three to six years, you're not going to be picking in the top five or ten of the NBA draft. So you'd like to think that that wouldn't matter, but still, it is something that's there. Um, I think it's a lot for a guy who we saw again this year didn't play the whole season. Uh, He hasn't played a whole season in a long time either. Is he still one of the five best players in the league? I think he is, Cam. I think he is. But I agree. But... That's when he's completely healthy. That's and, and that's and there's that doesn't happen all the time now. Uh, I don't think he's getting dealt. I, I agree. Really don't. I, I want I, it to I'm happen. You, Carver, he is playing for Brooklyn. Like for he has started the year in Brooklyn, right, buddy? He has to be. Like no one's going to pull the trigger on this. We're not going to mortgage the unless, future for him. Unless you're going to tell me that the Nets are going to come down from yeah. what it sounds like they're asking for, and when you hear some of these offers whether it was Phoenix before the Aiton stuff happened or Miami or Toronto. Like, what do they want from Toronto? Um, You you know, they wanted Barnes and a whole bunch of other stuff from there. Right. They said no. Uh, But that's the kind of stuff that they want in return. Uh, Jalen Brown, uh, Cam, we will have to once – we're going to find out what he thinks uh, of the trade in a moment. But first, of course, we will welcome in all of our radio affiliates. Pharrell, coast to coast on a Monday – Sports Grid Radio, Sirius XM, Channel 159, Sports Map, Sports Byline. Good to have everybody in the mix with us here today. Carver High and Cam Stewart in for Scotty. So what does Jalen Brown uh, think of all the rumors, uh, Cam? He took to social media to let everybody know what he thinks. Here we go. Pretty simple. (laughs) Shaking my head. (laughs) Your boy Jalen Brown. uh, not, (laughs) Not thrilled. That's it. But that says so much, Cam, because just even if they never make this trade now, the Celtics now have to deal with Brown in the future at the start of next year and have to sit him down and go, uh, you know, we're sorry. We, 
We weren't really trying to trade you. We weren't, you know, because now he's probably yeah. going to be upset. Oh, you want to get rid of me? We just went to the finals. Me, and Tatum, and now you, you want to make, you want to change the team up? So now you're going to upset other guys on the team if this doesn't happen. So that's the tricky part. No, you're, no, you're right, buddy. And the thing is, a lot of these guys don't have thick skin. Like, you could just see them, like, stewing and getting angry about, oh, really? How it's going to be that piece? Oh, okay. Sounds good to me. You know, uh, agent line one. What are we going to do here? Like, you know what I mean? So you're, you're playing a very dangerous game. That's the thing. But that's the thing. These teams don't have to be desperate with the Nets. They don't have any, like, they think they have power. They, they don't because teams aren't just going to give you a million picks and, like, two stars. We're going to have to do maybe one star in picks, but two, that's asking way too much. And now the other one's the Mitchell trade. Can we get that over with, too? Uh, we've yeah. been waiting weeks for – I'll tell you who else is waiting for it. The league office, because you notice they haven't put the schedule out next year. They're waiting for all these trades. They don't know who to put in the marquee games because Durant and Kyrie and Mitchell, all these guys might get traded. They don't want to put that big Christmas Day schedule out, Cam, and find out that all these guys aren't going to be on these teams anymore. Uh, What a shame. The Hornets also are interested in bringing back Kemba Walker, who uh, is washed, Cam. That's who Kemba Walker is. Uh, hey, I love watched. Kemba Walker, but the no party's game. over. Like, <laughs> gone are the days at UConn and, like, the, the, the memories uh, of, of past successes. I'm with you. It sucks. We all get older, buddy, and Kemba Walker, yeah. whatever. Like, it's, it's not it happening. It certainly has. Coast to coast, Carver High and Cam will come back. NFL camps are open, baby. Let's go. early line national championship odds you'll find this team right now at plus 350 with only alabama and ohio state in front of them you see they're right there in the thick of things when it comes to the scc title you see a 10 and a half win total got to beat alabama probably in order to get into the national championship game but sometimes we see in the scc that doesn't matter kevin you just have to get to the scc championship game and if you lose to alabama you can still make it in to the college football playoff only on sports grid Pharrell, coast to coast. I think they're super talented, and I think the key to everything is DeGrom. With the way Peterson, Walker, uh, McGill have all pitched, they have to be in it till the end. Uh, They're too good. Their bullpen is too good. I do think Atlanta's a better team altogether, but I think Scherzer and DeGrom, if healthy, could win the World Series. The Sports Grid Network. Betting above the rim. Keegan Murray was absolutely fantastic, folks. Also, the fact of what we saw out of a lot of the young guys. How about the two young guards of the San Antonio Spurs? Malachi Branham, Lake West. These two young guns showed the ability to score the ball. You gotta be impressed with the rookies and how they played and their ability to score the ball. And one last guy, Tari Eason. Betting above the rim. The morning after. Where do you expect Lamar to take that next step in his career entering 2022? He, again, is going to come in this season with a chip on his shoulder about the passing game because it's something that has been so highly debated. I think that most coaches would love to have a quarterback that could be such a dual threat, right? Most guys are only about their arm and not about their legs, but Lamar can do both. I would take the over probably, like, on the rushing yards for sure. He is definitely poised to do some solid numbers. The Sports Grid Network. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Liu, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. And we're back. 
Farrell Coast to Coast on a Monday. Carver High and Cam Stewart in for Scotty here on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. Good to have you aboard. Uh, and as always, if you bet $10 on any MLB game on BetMGM, you will win 200 if either team hits a home run. That's right. BetMGM, bet $10, any MLB game. If either team hits a homer, 200 Right back your way. Use promo code MLBHR2022, MLBHR2022, 10 for 2, Hundy, if anybody hits a homer. Go out and get it, bet MGM. Uh, all right, Cam, I have some NFL for you today as well. Isn't it great, Cam? Like, you get through the long off season, Super Bowl ends, you get the free age, you get all the nonsense, yeah. the draft, you get all that stuff happening. And then there's that huge dead period, but then finally... They start showing up to training camp, and you can feel it. The NFL's back in the air, baby. We've got all the futures in the mix. Everybody's excited. It's not even August yet, uh, and you can feel it in the air. Uh, some believe I was seeing today, Cam, that the Deshaun Watson suspension, which has just been taking forever, uh, could be announced sometime this week. Well, God, Cam. Him, Carver. I mean, a couple when, weeks whenever they... For the well, well, what, what, how what this should have been done weeks ago, buddy? This is nuts. Right. I don't get it. Like, and look, I'm not one to sit here and, like, you know, feel bad for the Cleveland Browns because, look, they traded for the guy. They knew what they were getting into coming yep. into the situation. But we're also at a point now where they opened camp on Saturday – they're getting into practices. I saw a film. He's in there throwing the ball. He's out there with the first team doing all the deal. They have no idea yet how long he's going to be out and what, you know, and, and being able to put their plans into motion of how long they're going to have to play Jacoby Brissett or whoever. So I think it has to be this week, Cam, just from the standpoint of you got to let them know. I mean, camps have started here. They got a plan for how long this guy's not going to be there. Good call, Carver. It's got to be in the next couple of days, I think. Not even at the end of the week. It's already a week or two too long. They should have had this stuff nailed down. It's ridiculous, actually. Like, exhibition games are under a couple of weeks, and we're, we don't even know what the heck's going to happen. Like, they have to. Like, come on. Let's go. Get a decision in there. I believe a week from Thursday, yes. uh, Cam, is when we get the first preseason game, the <laughs> illustrious Hall of Fame game. Uh, is coming in, and the Raiders are playing in that. Raiders-Jaguars uh, is the Hall of Fame game this year. Raiders have opened camp. They were one of the first ones to do so. Devontae Adams over the weekend uh, made, made that comment. I've moved from one Hall of Fame quarterback to another one in Derek yes. Carr. Uh, that's a great quote there. Here is Derek Carr, Cam, setting the bar high this year for the Raiders and getting a little chippy. With the media out in Vegas, here we go. And that's that's honestly how I feel. I just got to be more honest. I just got to start speaking my mind. And as I'm getting older, I just say what I want to say, you know. And so my real answer is the expectation, all that kind of stuff, who says that, honestly, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Whether they don't say anything or they say a lot, nobody cares. Let, hopefully they talk about us at the end. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, But right now, that crap don't matter. It doesn't matter, Derek. Why do you talk about it and why do you Thank you, Paul. It's so good to see you. Uh, <laughs> I say it because I'm a positive person, and I try and uh, – it is. And I try and encourage my teammates. There's a way that I say things to encourage my locker room to maybe put a chip on their shoulder, and sometimes I do it too much. And so I don't appreciate your tone either. You can pump that back a little bit. Cam, I'm probably uh, – yes, I like that. That's nice. Get Carr going right at it. He's making it known early on in camp uh, that he's not taking it this year. He's going he's gonna to be right out in front, say what he wants to say out there in Vegas. Cam, it's probably going to cost me a lot of money, uh, but I am buying in on the Raiders this season. I'm pushing the chips on several fronts – Call me crazy if you want to. Uh, over, under, eight and a half wins. I'm on the over. To make the playoffs, yes, plus 170. I'm on the yes. In fact, Cam, I may even make a small splash on to win the AFC West at plus 700. Small splash. I'm with you on, I'm with you on the Raiders over. I think they win more than eight and a half. I'm with you. I think they make the playoffs. Yes, Carver? I don't know. Derek, uh, uh, shirts have sleeves. The guy, honestly, if you would have saw that guy <laughs> in that Raiders undershirt, I'd hope my wallet is on a chain. Like, I, 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 he looked like a court. Like, I, I was just like, oh, my God. This guy's like, he's coming for my money. He looked like an absolute, like, like a robber. Anyway, he's fired up. I'm fired up about the Raiders too, Carver. 
I like what they've done on defense. They made some improvements. Devontae Adams is going to be huge. They already have Jacobs. they got a good running game. I'm with you. I think the Raiders are going to win. Like, they could win that division. The Chargers are always hyped up. What are they doing? The Chiefs are going to regress a little bit. Yes. Yar, give us the Raiders. Let's go. I'm with you. And, Look, and Derek I, Carr, he looks like he's sleeping in a ditch. But, God, he, he, I like his anger. Been hanging out with the Raider fans in the old black hole, yes. Cam. Uh, that's where he's been hanging. The old black hole with all the guys who dress up over there. That's where Carr's been hanging out. Look, I know it's a tough division. I get it. Uh, but I think a couple of those teams in that division – getting a little bit more pushed than they should be getting uh denver being specifically the team uh that i'm talking about cam i'm not high on the broncos i don't think russell wilson uh changes them into some super bowl contender this year who else is a super bowl contender cam look who showed up yesterday in western new york the bills have gone to work and that cam with some very lofty expectations as the leaders in the preseason on the to win the Super Bowl big board. Here's Josh Allen knows the expectations are higher. Again, we got to come out here, find ways to get better and improve on on ourselves. You know, nothing that we did last year is going to carry over to this year. Nothing that we're going to do next year is going to affect us this year. Um, so again, it's a brand new season. Everybody's starting 0 0. But we're a new team. We're a different team. You know, we know that. We understand that. We've got new pieces. We've got a a new offensive coordinator. Um, we've got a new mindset. So again, just trying to find how what what we are what our identity is that's that's really what training camp is for and you know hopefully by the time we leave st john fisher we know what type of team we are mentally and physically um and we can start developing game plans and go from there week by week but again there's there's no higher expectations than what we have for ourselves in the locker room and again i think if you're a team that doesn't have super bowl or nothing you know in your minds i don't think that you're doing it the right way obviously that's that's the main goal is to win world championships and um we got to find a way to get it done but again it starts with week one cam i'm i'm very nervous um with my team being the favorites on the board but as we get closer to the season i'm slowly starting to embrace it cam i watched this team suck for 20 plus years i have to go into the mindset of they're actually good now. I have to embrace it. 11 and a half, the win total here, Cam. Look at this. Minus 600 to make the playoffs. Minus 220 to win the East. I got to embrace it, Cam. Yeah, I get it. You and Marenzi, man, I would do both shows. Both guys are Bills fans who I'm working with. But the thing is, the Bills are good. The problem is, Carver, the Jets had a good draft. They might be a little bit better. The Dolphins, I think, are going to be better. New England, we don't know what the hell we're going to get. 11 and a half is rich. They will win the division. I just don't know. 12 wins in the regular season, that's a lot to ask, man. These teams around them are getting better. But Buffalo, obviously, head and shoulders above these teams. But they got to win these games, like losing to Jacksonville and stuff. That can't happen anymore, buddy. Can't happen. No, no. You cannot have that game. I still can't figure out what happened that day down in Jacksonville. or where. I hope they had a good time Saturday night down there in J-Ville, exactly. Cam, because I got no idea uh, what happened to those guys in that 9-6 loss. Uh, to the Jaguars last year. Uh, Kyler Murray's new $230 million contract extension requires four hours of independent study of film each game week. Am I supposed to take from that, Cam, that he wasn't doing four hours of independent <laughs> film game yes, study you before were. he signed, before this year? <laughs> yes. Am I supposed to? Is that pretty you much what we're saying? Hours, Kyler. <laughs> hey, listen, I like Murray as much as the next guy. That contract is ridiculous. You just can't pay the guy because he's the next quarterback up. It's nuts. No. He was horrible in the playoff I, game I, against the Rams. Sorry. It's ridiculous. I agree with you. I think they're going to regret that one. Tyreek Hill again this morning. Two is the most accurate quarterback in the NFL. Man, he's going to regret saying that. You might be the next daily fantasy millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition.
DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Fantasy Sports Today. Basically, the name of the game in fantasy football now at the quarterback position is finding a guy who can run. We didn't really see that from Trevor Lawrence at all as a rookie. He just was kind of, he was doing his best to survive those games, right? If Doug Peterson can be, let's say, a C-plus NFL coach, have the team prepared, have the guys trying. I think Trevor Lawrence can have a phenomenal season. I mean, and, and this division stinks, right? Their division absolutely stinks. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. They probably have saved themselves some dollars, being the 76ers front office, on not having that done. Provided themselves the opportunity mainly to bring in a P.J. Tucker, a favorable deal with Harden, right? He probably could have held their feet to the fire. Like, I need five years and I need every single dollar you have because the Sixers needed to bring Harden back. They didn't have the leverage to let Harden walk, doing whatever they can to bring the Philadelphia 76ers a chance. Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. The Yankees need to be the best team in baseball. They need to have the highest win total of anybody in baseball. They need to absolutely run away with that division, which they are going to. So the question is 105 wins, 101 wins. And Aaron Judge needs to replicate what he did before the All-Star break. He needs to sniff Roger Maris with those 61 homers. I think you have to be a record breaker in order to beat Shohei Otani out for the MVP. The Sports Grid Network. Sports professor Rick Haro into the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your Sports News Minute. Well, new leagues come and go. Capitalized leagues come to a very important spot because of the calendar and who commits to whom. We had the USFL live, obviously very important to all of us. But one of the biggest issues now is the ICC and what happens with that. Pakistan has said that the Cricket Council needs to regulate the prolific growth of 20-somethings, the overall process relative to the smaller, more dynamic, quicker, but highly capitalized leagues as the South Africa and the Australia test match of the regular circuit was postponed because too many uh, issues on the calendar. Will Pakistan's win request ultimately prevail? Well, similar to live and golf. Only so many dates to go around. See how this all shakes out. For El Coast to Coast on a Monday, Carver High in for Scotty right here on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. Good to have you with us. And every Monday here on Coast to Coast, of course, we chat with the great, the wonderful, the powerful Cousin Sal, the Extra Points Podcast. Good to have him with us. Hi, Sal. How are you? What's happening, buddy? It's great to talk to you. I thought Pharrell only took off the Mondays uh, during NFL season. He, he gets like 16 <laughs> NFL weeks off, doesn't he? This is a Saturday we, ordinary. We got, uh, he's actually got Sal the entire week this week, a, a full wow. week in the, in the summer uh, for Pharrell. Can you believe it? Uh, so a full Monday through Friday. I don't even know, want to know what goes on. I know probably everyone in studio, you're passing the hat trying to get bail money together. I, I can't imagine giving that guy seven days off uh, <laughs> where he's had his own it's, free will. It, it's a lot of time away from the show, uh, but That's he should right. be back here next Monday uh, to get things going. All right, Sal, should we start with uh, yesterday with the Otani stuff with the MVP? Because I know that 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 our boy, the parlay kid, responded, great boy, Mike. I started going nuts about Otani and Judge with the MVP. You got in there, said that I was taking too many hits uh, from the Pharrell pipe. Yes. Uh, let's I let's do it here, that. buddy. Uh, look. Right now, Judge went back to the leader, minus 105, Otani's plus 110. Right. I'm not saying that Otani isn't amazing and everything that he does, he can hit, he can pitch, he can do it all. But does that mean, Sal, that now for the rest of his career, we just have to give him the MVP every year because he hits and pitches? Mm. And I get it. He does it. I, he's exceptional. I, I understand that. But does that mean the award is automatically his now for the rest of time while he plays in Major League Baseball? I, I'm not going to say that. I won't go that far. I will say 
for the rest of time, so long as he hits 35 homers, knocks in 105, 110 RBI, steals 15 bases, and has 15 wins, I would say you have to consider him a number one at the top. And I know your argument is you have to play for a winner. And for the most part, I agree with you. But we both have to make exceptions. Like, um, it, it can't be that because you're stuck on the Anaheim Angels that you can never win MVP regardless of what – great stats you put up. But conversely, I'd agree, it can't be that Otani wins every year, regardless of what, like if Judge hits 75, 80 home runs, I have to step aside. But I really think as long as Otani is doing everything except selling popcorn and beer in the stadium, you have to consider this. It shouldn't be that because we see it, we saw it last year, okay, he got it, uh, let's let's do it again. It's like Jelly is the perfect uh, partner for peanut butter, until it loses its crown. Like, I'm sorry, but this is, uh, it's doing things that we've never seen in a hundred years before. So I think that needs to be considered. I know. I just, I don't know if it's an, an old school feeling or whatever it is, yeah. but I've always just thought, you know, it's got to be on a team that's doing something valuable. I think we should change the name of the award. Just call it the most outstanding player every year. Right. Take the valuable part out of it. And then I wouldn't have an issue. And sure, there's been times where there's not guys deserving. Last year was perfect. There wasn't anybody deserving on one of the winning teams. So why not give it to him? In fact, the Angels have pulled this off three times in the last six years. Because two of the no, three years I, the Trout won, they sucked those years too. So the I'm Angels have gotten three of these. I'll say this in response to that. First of all, would you be jumping the other way if you know Judge had 75 home runs this year on an Angels team that – didn't sniff the playoffs, would you say, no, that no way that guy could win MVP? I mean, because that's what would be the case. I mean, the Angels wouldn't be much better with Judge on this team with the power numbers. And secondly, that's... maybe look at it as terms of most valuable to the league and not not the team itself. I, I don't know. I, I keep I know. going back. I don't know why. I'm, that... I'm, I'm starstruck by this whole time. I... But... I, I, I get it, and I was at first too, but now I've kind of I've kind of gone you're to the Yankee other fan. side now, Sal. You're like, a Yankee fan. Well, I look, I said this earlier. I would if if Jordan Alvarez had the same numbers as Judge right now on the Astros, I'd say the same thing. It just it would okay. it's just for me. I like to add in, and you're right. The year like you're talking about, if he was on the Angels, that's like when A Rod won with Texas. You know, A Rod uh -huh. had those unbelievable years, and the Rangers were god awful. But he had 56 and 175. So they're really just, uh -huh. you couldn't avoid it. You almost had to give it to him. Uh, let's jump to the other side, because I want to yeah. know how many tickets you've put on your boy, the polar bear, to win the National League MVP, because I don't <laughs> think that it should be wrapped up. I don't think it should be wrapped up like it is for Paul Goldschmidt right now either. I think that there's some guys who got a chance to win that. Oh, you have to. Yes, that has to be your perspective, right? Because if the Cardinals don't make the playoffs and they're only a couple of games yeah. in front here at this point, um, as great a year as Goldschmidt's having, you, you'd you have to say, no, step aside. But uh, no, Alonzo, listen, I, I well, first of all, I lost a bunch on him in the home run derby, which I actually attended. So uh, uh -huh. I'm uh, staying away a little bit. But the other thing is, um, hey, look at Freddie Freeman. I think he has like in the last 12 games, he has eight of them. He has two or more hits. Like, that's a guy who's leading a team. Great for you. Dodgers, they're not going away. They're going to compete with the Yankees for best record. They're going to be in first place. So that's the kind of guy I'm looking at. I think he's plus 450 or something, somewhere in there. Uh, that would be my longest shot if you're not going to take uh, Goldschmidt to win MVP. Man, Alonzo's gone down to 16 to 1. Yeah. Alonzo's gone wow. to 16 to 1. Wow. And I kind of like Austin Riley. He's slipped down to 20 to 1. Because uh, I felt he was kind of the guy leading that Braves charge. But the Mets are going to beat Absolutely. out the Braves for the NL East. The Mets are going to win the division, Sal. Are you oh, ready? Man. Since we'll, we'll do this. To, are you ready for Mets-Yankees at City Field <laughs> over the next two nights? Are you I, ready for We that? should have a – you know what? Maybe we'll figure it out right now or, uh, you know, uh, be through our DMs or something. We need, a, we need a bet here. Although it is a two-game series, so there's a likelihood that they split. I do want to bet on this. Um, I, I worry about the Mets because if they didn't pull it out yesterday, they're a half game up on the Braves. I know you have a lot of confidence. I'm all of a sudden now not high on DeGrom. I, I feel like every rehab start, there's, there's soreness, there's tightness, there's something. And when this translates to major league starts, it's not going to get better. It's only going to get worse. So 
I'm not counting on him at all. I think that's going to be a gravy situation, whatever we could get from him. And I'm, I'm just nervous about this team in general. Now, we do have Vogelbach, who, uh, Danny Vogelbach, who I love. I love anyone fatter than me uh, playing on my team. He might complete. What are his odds for MVP? I'm not I'm looking down here. I'm not seeing it. Look, Five minute, Marte, Turner, I, the other Marte. No, I don't, I don't see it at all. That Vogelbach is my guy right now. Look, I love Vogelbach. You got the beefy trio this year between Vogelbach, uh, the guy Tellez on the Brewers, and Kirk on the Blue Jays. Those three guys, yeah. the beefy trio, uh, hitting a ton of home <laughs> runs this year. And they'll they'll love Vogelbach in New York if he gets some big hits because he's a big oh, guy. Yeah. He's got big personality. If he hits a couple big homers for the Mets, uh, they are going to absolutely love that guy. Get, we'll have to talk a, about a, the bet. A, a bagel endorsement, a, uh, you know, some kind of pizza <laughs> endorsement, egg cream. But New York's perfect for him. <laughs> they got to do something for him out there, that's for sure. We'll talk. We'll have to get the bet going. Maybe we'll extend it to all four games, including the okay, two games smart. at Yankee Stadium uh, later on in the season. Uh, NFL camps opening this week. I'm nervous as hell with my Bills being the favorite for everything. How about you with the Cowboys being the favorite for everything in the NFC East? Well, I don't love it. I, I do think there was a wide enough gap uh, between the Cowboys and Eagles, even though the Eagles didn't make the playoffs last year. Um, and the Eagles certainly closed that gap with the draft and what they've done. But um, they still have uh, Hurts as quarterback. And they're not sold on him. I know I'm not sold on him. I feel like we have the better quarterback. Let's say I don't want to sound like a 12 year old fantasy nerd, but that's where it begins and mostly ends is that the quarterback position. And I'm not even going to talk about the giants or Washington commanders. Like the Cowboys have the best there is at quarterback and they traded Amari Cooper for a fifth rounder. I think they will be okay. Receiver wise defensively, they gained 10 points a game uh, and they kept the coordinator. So, I think we're in decent shape. I don't see a 12 and five situation, but uh, I think 10 and seven could be enough to win that division. Get off to a good start against the Bucks uh, opening night. We could say it here on coast to coast, Sal. Hurts stinks. He's not that good. Yeah, Hurts isn't that good. Right? He'll be. A, he'll be. He'll be. He's not that good. They're going to be just fine. <laughs> the Eagles are going to. They'll be looking for somebody else after this season when they realize that Hurts isn't going to be uh, their man. I was trying to get Cam Stewart sold in on the Raiders. Can I sell you? On the Raiders, make playoffs plus 170, win AFC West plus 700. Can I sell you? You won't have to try too hard. I love them. And I think 7-1 to is ridiculous. I understand that division is gangbusters, and it's tough to find flaws in any of those teams. But let's, the Raiders were better than the Chargers last year. They won that Week 18 game. They won, People think, the Char oh, my God, Herbert, what he did on fourth down. It's like, hey, the Raiders won. The Chargers are 31st in the league against the run. I get it. They have, like, pass rushers coming. I think the Chiefs, i like them to make the playoffs. I, I would go make the playoffs before division, sprinkle a little on the division. I'm not ready to bury the Chiefs just yet. I think Denver gets the no. lower end of Russell Wilson. I'm not sure that he steps up to the, uh, the place where everybody thinks he's going to be. But I think it'll be Raiders, Chiefs neck and neck throughout the season. And I love 7-1. That's way too much for a division winner. I, I'm I'm with you. I'm not in on the Broncos. Uh, I'm surprised yeah. everybody thinks that they're a big Super Bowl contender. Russell Wilson, I know he was hurt last year. He wasn't great either when he did play. And I don't think the Broncos were that. When were the Broncos some great team that were a quarterback away before getting Russell right. Wilson? They're not a good team. They're, I'm taking the under for them. They're going to miss the playoffs. Sal, tremendous stuff as always. We will talk about the Yankee Met bet. Uh, we'll set it up tonight before tomorrow. Uh, I'm already nervous about facing Scherzer. I thought I was going to get DeGrom and Scherzer the next two days, but I guess no DeGrom. Oh, really? Uh, we'll have to see him. In, um, yeah, I thought I was going to get him. After the way they moved that that simulated game back to yeah, Thursday, yeah, yeah. I figured they were lining him up to place the Yankees. But, Sal, good as always. Scotty back next week. Thanks for a few minutes, my man. Have a good night. Great to see you. Thanks, buddy. See you. The great cousin Sal. We're back on Coast to Coast after this. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network.
people are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? Let's see how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full Buffalo. circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for and them. And Godwin being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You could take the money line. And we have to go to San Jose too. Maybe a small play on San Jose. I'm gonna go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In game live. Prime. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are gonna be all good in game six at home. But boy, you wanna give the eight and a half points with a desperate team facing a little Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. Betting above the rim. I mean, listen, they went to Summer League. LeBron and Westbrook looked like they were at a middle school dance. One was on one side of the place, the other was on the other side. I don't believe it. I still think at the end of the day, and plus, Westbrook fired his agent after his agent wanted him to stay in L.A. So, yep. I don't believe for one second. I think they're just playing with semantics. I still think he gets moved, and I still think it's going to be for Kyrie Irving. Betting above the rim. In game live. You know, at, at 150 to 1, a $10 bet is paying you 1500 For $10, it's not a bad little safeguard. There's a couple yeah. of teams in spots like that, but for 10 bucks, right? There is that recency bias here, and right now, the Jets most resemble that team that Cincinnati was last year, a young team, second year quarterback. There's value. Value is value. It doesn't make a difference where it Catch is. Catch the program every single day on the Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. I think they're super talented, and I think the key to everything is DeGrom. With the way Peterson, Walker, uh, McGill have all pitched, they have to be in it till the end. Uh, they're too good. Their bullpen is too good. I do think Atlanta's a better team altogether, but I think Scherzer and DeGrom, if healthy, could win the World Series. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell coast to coast here on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. Carver High in for Scotty. He is out all week on vacation. Good to have you aboard with us here. Uh, as always on a Monday and a couple times a week on Coast to Coast, our Sports Grid NFL insider is the great Adam Kaplan. He joins us now. And Adam, it's in the air. You can smell it. Team showing up to camp. Coaches and quarterbacks doing the opening interviews. It's here, baby. Let's go. Even Kaplan's getting on the road soon. Season's yeah. here, Adam. Let's go. I know, Mike. So, so tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow on Tuesday, every team that had not reported will report. And those teams that report will practice on Wednesday for the first time. So, yeah, no doubt about it. The heat out here, out east, in the 90s, somewhere in this country, it's in over the hundreds. So, yeah, that, that is the official start of training camps when it's super hot and humid and that's what we've got right now certainly do all right so before we get into the afc south training camp storylines you and scott do this basically before every segment now for the last couple weeks so i will ask you again because now the browns have reported to camp i watched all the video of watson throwing to the first team he's out there practicing like now that they're actually there and practicing at him like I think just for the sake of the Browns, like they got to get this thing done. Like they got to be able to know how yeah. long this guy is going to be out. I think it's silly now at this point. They need to make this announcement. Here, here's the, here's the a couple of things. First of all, yeah, they practiced as a full team on Wednesday. Uh, the the rookies and quarterbacks reported over the weekend, so that's why you saw some video. Yeah, theoretically, you you'd like to know when you when everyone's practicing on Wednesday, 
are you going to have your quarterback this season or not? Now, for instance, if Watson gets suspended, but not for the whole season, he, he could actually practice. Then he would go on the reserve suspended list to start the regular season. They, then they could replace his roster spot. But yeah, you'd love to know that. Now they brought in Josh Rosen, obviously on a one-year deal. Uh, he, he's just there to, to provide depth. Jacoby Brissett is definitely the starter. Uh, if Watson is suspended, I say, yeah, we still don't know. Judge, uh, Judge Robinson, the retired federal judge. I was told the hope was by the end of the month, but there was no guarantee because they're not going to Russia. Remember, the legal briefs were handed in both sides two weeks ago. There's a lot of information. And she's the one who's got to go through it. It's not like four people could do it for her. She's got to do it on her own. And that's why it's going to take a little bit longer. But you're right. I, I and, you know, if you're a Browns fan, you kind of like to know where you're headed here. Because as we, Farrell and I were saying on last week's show, Mike, that if you're the Browns, without him, Watson, there are six, six maybe seven win team. Vegas is not even putting out an over-under total because they don't know if they're going to have Watson. With them, they are potentially a 10 or 11 win team. You saw two years ago, by the way, mostly the same roster, some differences, but particularly on offense, they had a different receiver core. But if you look at it, when they shocked the world, mostly these guys on defense were there. So it's all about the quarterback position, and they got to have Watson or they're not going to go anywhere. And the flip side of that coin, of course, Adam, is even though we're sitting here saying, ah, you know, they really need to know, they also knew what they were getting into when they traded for him. Uh, yeah. They knew a situation like this yeah. was going to happen, so nobody's crying for the Browns uh, around the league either, that's for sure. All right, AFC South training camp storylines. Let's start, Adam, with the Indianapolis Colts, who after a miserable finish down in Jacksonville, losing that mm -hmm. game to the Jaguars, they now have a new quarterback in Matt Ryan, what do you think yeah. about the Colts starting camp? Yeah, so if you look at their situation last season with Carson Wentz, they were pretty competitive. But the, you just talked about that awful loss at Jacksonville. That, that curtailed their season. Uh, the owner, Jim Mercy, did not want Wentz back. It was really not just the last game that put it over the top. But they, they were looking for better leadership. They're hoping that Matt Ryan will provide that. Uh, they're, by contract structure, they're pretty much going to have him through 2023. And here's a guy who's extremely durable. Guy's been to a Super Bowl before. Tough loss against the Patriots where they blew a big lead, but that was not his fault. But the fact of the matter is, he's been there. He's done that. He's in the twilight of his career. Mike, as we know in the National Football League, you could play very well at the quarterback position in your late 30s. The issue for Matt Ryan is, is not the ability. He could still play. I do worry about their offensive line. Everyone talks about how great their offensive line is. I don't see it. They need a left tackle. A Raymond is their third-round pick, who they believe will be their the one up being their third their left tackle of the future, whether he'll be ready week one remains to be seen. They got Matt Pryor in a, a trade from Philly. Matt Pryor had been a decent backup tackle guard. They're paying him over $5 million this season. Uh, the, the contract's got a little bit of an upside. Uh, they're going to have a new right guard. So they've got some questions of their offensive line. And then, you know, Mike, their over-under is nine and a half. Uh, it, we, we appreciate the comments we've gotten on social media with these clips. One guy's like, man, you got to be more definitive. <laughs> yes or no? Okay. On, on the win totals. Okay, Colts, nine and a half from FanDuel, Mike. I don't like the over. Why? I don't think their defense is good enough. I, they, they certainly have individual talent. Quiddy Pay is a potential breakout player, a, a, a first-round pick last year. Very good defensive line. Darius Leonard's coming off of an injury. He's, he's not able to practice right now. The biggest problem, Mike, is in their secondary. I, I don't think it's a great secondary. I, I have some issues with it, and that to me is why I've got them around nine wins. I do not like that over at all. Uh, in fact, the, the under is plus 135. The over, so Vegas thinks it's going over, minus 160. Now, for Leonard, is he going to be ready for week one, or is he just missing practices at camp? What, as I know he's starting on the pup list, so what does yeah. that mean for Leonard? When is the first time yeah. he's going to play? So basically the way it works is on active PUP, physically unable to perform. You could come off at any time. The only concern would be is if he's not ready by late August, then they're going to have a decision to make. Because if, if they keep him on there, he would miss, miss at least the first month of the season. I don't get the picture that that's going to be an issue, but it's something we'll kind of revisit. And obviously, if Darius Leonard missed games in the regular season, that's problematic. Because they, the another thing that the Colts have in the front seven, they're very good, they have very good linebacker core. They're just not good enough in the back end. That does concern me. But again, in that division, and we'll get to Derrick Henry and the Titans later, those are the kings of the of the AFC South. 
I just don't. I think the Colts are a little bit above average. I don't see them over nine and a half. New leader in Jacksonville for the Jaguars, yeah. Adam, of course, with Super Bowl winning coach Doug Peterson coming in to clean up the mess from Urban Meyer a year ago. Second year for Trevor Lawrence back there. About the Jaguars starting things off. Yeah, Mike, it has really been futility for the Jaguars. It, it's almost hard to believe, but they've had one winning season in their last 14. And that is in 2017 when they came out of nowhere with Blake Bortles to shock the world. They came within a play of getting the Super Bowl. Remember that game against the Patriots. So, look, it's been dismal since then. You mentioned the the just awful circumstances uh, with the, the former head coach, Urban Meyer, and, and the way things ended. He didn't even make the – in fact, he didn't even make it to the end of the season. They were 3-14. and 14. They were terrible and miserable against a spread of 5-12. and 12. Now, this is what I find interesting. And it, they were a 5.5 win total before the draft. They had what most people on the league think is a good draft. Very aggressive free agency. It's actually gone up a game to six and a half. I don't like the over. I like the under, which is minus 135. So Las Vegas agrees with me. The over is plus 115. Is the roster better? No question about it. Trevon Walker, their first round pick. Lloyd, the linebacker from Michigan, who's really, really talented. They're okay in the secondary. Pets rush is not great. Offensive line has been re- reshaped. They've had a lot of talent on, at a wide receiver. Oh, they got a great bit, bit of news on Monday. This surprised a lot of people. James Robinson, who had been their starting running back the last two seasons, come back from a torn Achilles suffered in last November. He's going to start working soon, uh, Mike. He is not only physically unable to perform less. That is very, very surprising. Now, Travis Etienne is going to be their main guy, but James Robinson is a very good pass protector. So if you're a Jaguar fan, this is really good news. In fact, they did not put anyone on the physically unable to perform less today. Uh, people want to hear definitiveness, uh, Adam. I'll give it to you. Dead under six and a half. Yep, uh, no, I I've played this one yep. the last yep. few years in a row, and I want I, the Jaguars got to prove it to me. You go ahead. They win seven wins. God bless them. I'm, I pl- won the under last year. I'm going after them again this year with the six and a half. The Texans also have a new era down there. Lovey Smith, the head coach. Davis Mills, the quarterback, and a very low win total. I mean, four and a half, Mike. <laughs> I, I don't. Maybe you've seen three or two in your in your career, but four and a half is really low. But look, they were awful last season. It, it, Davis Mills, they they went into it, throwing him in there. He did a good job under the circumstances. Unfortunately, it's un, it's really disappointing and sad for uh, for John Mechie, uh, their second round pick, and we 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 feel for him, uh, who's not expected to play this season, as yes. you know, Mike with leukemia. We wish him well in his recovery. But Nico Collins is a guy that knows this offense that Pep Hamilton's going to run. It's similar to the one that uh, they ran in Michigan. I want Pep work there. Uh, so it, it's going to be a run-based offense. They'll figure out who that's going to be. They've got a, probably more of a committee between Damian Pierce, uh, Rex Burkhead, and, and Marlon Mack. Uh, re, kind of a rebuild offensive line, not too bad. The problem is, uh, Mike, when you look at it, not enough talent in the front seven. Their defense was, has not been very good. Uh, they've added two big pieces in the secondary with Stingley, the corner, and Petrie at safety. But they're a long ways away. I like them around four wins, and if I had to take one side, I can't believe I'm saying under four and a half. They're both, by the way, the over is minus 110, the under is minus 110. If I had to take a side, it would be under. I I just don't think they're going to be very good. Well, let me ask you this before we finish with the Titans. I did see the Davis Mills touchdown prop. Now, as bad as they're going to be, will Davis play all year? 20 and a half, a bad team, a lot of garbage time touchdowns at the end. Can I get Davis Mills over 20 and a half touchdown passes? Well, no, that, no <laughs> way. If, if if they don't wind up acquiring someone like Jimmy Garoppolo, which there's, there's by the way, there's, to be clear, there's been no sign of it. Davis Mills is their guy. There's, there's no Kyle Allen, forget it. Jeff Driscoll, forget it. Kevin Hogan, forget it. Davis Mills is their guy otherwise. No, I, I could see in the teens now it'll be brandon cooks who's back nico collins uh they'll go with a committee at tight end i just don't think they're deep enough at wide receiver i could see 15 or 16 passing touchdowns from davis mills we'll finish with the titans now adam not only the defending afc south champs but they were the number one seed in the afc a year ago with that home loss to the bengals what do you look for them as they get camp going I am stunned that they're only nine and a half. Derrick Henry now is fully recovered from the the broken foot. Remember, he came back a little early. Clearly wasn't himself. They put too much pressure on Ryan Tannehill to win the game for them. The big loss is A.J. Brown, who shocked us. You and I worked during the draft in Vegas. 
That was surprising. Uh, that's the receiver position. Robert Woods is coming off the torn ACL. He's doing really well. He's going he's to start working this week in practice. That's, that's a good sign. Uh, I just don't think they're going to be good enough for wide receiver. But getting Derrick Henry back is everything. I actually like the over minus 135, the unders plus 115. They're still the class of that division. Very good defense, by the way. Got to give their coaches credit, though, last season. Despite the loss of Derrick Henry, uh, they found that kid Hilliard, who did a great job, Foreman did a great job, was down the backup for Christian McCaffrey in Carolina. But getting back Derrick Henry, their meal ticket, I'm telling you, he's he's the truth. He's amazing. And by the way, this could be Ryan Tannehill's last year in the, the, for the, with the Titans because the guaranteed money in his contract expires after the season. So he's going to have to play well for him to come back next season. This is a real bad division, Adam. This is a real bad it. division. I know it is. Like, I, and listen, you're right about the, the Titans with the nine and a half because let's be honest here. They should get five wins out of this division. Split with the Colts, beat the Texans and the Jaguars twice. That's five wins right there. You'd like to think that Henry and company uh, would be able to scratch five more wins along the way uh, throughout the season, that's for sure. Adam, tremendous stuff. As always, we will talk to you later in the week as training camp visits begin for Adam Kaplan. Thanks, buddy. We'll talk to you later in the week. You got it. Thank you. Adam Kaplan, Sports Grid NFL Insider. Coast to coast. Come back and wrap it up right after this on the grid. The morning after. At the end of the day, the Aces with their offensive firepower with Asia Wilson and Kelsey Plum and Jackie Young. First year coach Becky Hammond is definitely one of the most explosive teams, scoring about 91 points a game, I do believe, in the W. So I think this is just about right because I would say that they are the third best team in the WNBA. A little bit here, uh, clear of the Connecticut Sun and then the Washington Mystics right now, 12 to 1. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Basically, the name of the game in fantasy football now at the quarterback position is finding a guy who can run. We didn't really see that from Trevor Lawrence at all as a rookie. He just was kind of, he was doing his best to survive those games, right? If Doug Peterson can be, let's say, a C-plus NFL coach, have the team prepared, have the guys trying. I think Trevor Lawrence can have a phenomenal season. I mean, and, and this division stinks, right? Their division absolutely stinks. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. They probably have saved themselves some dollars, being the 76ers front office, on not having that done. Provided themselves the opportunity mainly to bring in a P.J. Tucker, a favorable deal with Harden, right? He probably could have held their feet to the fire. Look, I need five years and I need every single dollar you have because the Sixers needed to bring Harden back. They didn't have the leverage to let Harden walk, doing whatever they can to bring the Philadelphia 76ers a chance. Only on Sports Grid. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Rogers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell, coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penguins. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live I all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, yeah, time. Major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. And we're back, 
Farrell, coast to coast here on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. Finishing up here uh, on the grid. Uh, I did not go as deep as Scotty likes to go uh, for the end of the show. Uh, fast stories. I just couldn't do it. Uh, we know that Scotty finds some very wild and crazy stuff. Uh, I did not go that deep down. Texans rookie wide receiver, as Adam was just saying, John Mechie, diagnosed with leukemia. All the best to him. He will miss this season for the Texans. Colts linebacker Darius Leonard on the pup to start the season as well. The XFL announces where their cities will be for next spring. Arlington, Houston, San Antonio. We got enough teams in Texas. Vegas, Orlando, Seattle, St. Louis, and Washington, D.C. will be the home for the XFL. Patty Pimblett destroyed that guy, Jordan Levitt. I mean, the tap out was going. He did exactly what he said he was going to do on that clip we played last week. How about this guy, Tom Aspinall, blows out his knee on the leg kick 15 seconds in. Are you kidding me? How about the cops in Green Bay who wouldn't let A.J. Dillon do the Lambeau leap during a Man City Bayern Munich friendly? They were at Lambeau Field. A.J.'s got the Bayern jersey on. He's going to jump in with the fans, and the cops grab him. Must have thought he was somebody running on the field. What happened at the end? He's A.J. Dillon, and when he wants to do a Lambeau leap, he does it. Mississippi rep Bernie Thompson wants the attorney general to focus on Brett Favre's role in the state's welfare scandal. Not a good scene for Brett. Zach Wilson's mom wants the media to stop stalking her at the gym. Can we leave the woman alone? Adrian Peterson and Le'Veon Bell's boxing match, which was supposed to be this Saturday in Los Angeles, has been postponed to early September. Not their fault. One of the other fights fault. And actor Paul Sorvino passes away today at 83. Paul, one of the tremendous That Guy actors in Goodfellas, several other films. Uh, sad loss for Paul Sorvino. All right, Pharrell, coast to coast. Thanks for being with us today. Game Time Decisions is next. We're back tomorrow. Me and the Prime Minister, Cam Stewart. Great job by Mafia. Great job by Hayden LTN. See you tomorrow on The Grid.